Hey, the new kit on the block is lightweight PLA. Will my existing CAD models and STL files still work? Will it muck up my Prusor Mini? Time to find out. A bit of context. I do scratch builds and evolve from an all-foam Armin type wing and fuselage to a hybrid of foam and printed ribs and spars for the wings. This combination is resistant to the frequent crashes of Novus and strong enough to hold up a one kilo weight over a one meter span. But what I really want is a slow flyer, and for that I need to lose a lot of weight. So I got a spool of polylite, I scoured YouTube for hints, and that let my curiosity loose by picking an existing simple boom to tail connector STL file and printed it in PLA. And then I loaded up the polylite and bumped it up to 240 degrees C to see what would happen. Wow, the weight drop from 7.4 grams to 3.1 grams was, hey, that's quite nice. So I kicked it up to 260 degrees and the weight dropped to 2.6 grams. It bulked up nicely. And of course the boom would no longer fit, so hey, looks like I'd have to tweak CAD files if I'm going to use lightweight PLA. Let's wind back and do some testing. If I have a part with a nominal one millimeter wall thickness in normal PLA, I would expect a double wall in lightweight PLA, 240 degrees C. Yeah, there's not much expansion, so we can see a little bit of that gap. At 250 degrees C, the wall thickness has grown to well, 1.24 millimeters, and at 260 degrees, we're up to 1.4 millimeters, and the cavity no longer exists. With a thinner nominal wall thickness, we more clearly see the expansion based on temperature. Switching to an existing STO of a set of wing ribs shouts very loudly that retractions make for a rather messy print. Also, lightweight PLA is seriously squishy stuff. I'd seen photos, but having the real thing is most instructive. It goes without saying, but, well, lesson one is patience. Let the print cool before you touch it. Rough handling when it's hot results in a pretzel. Having learned this, the next observation is that using normal PL in infill settings at the scale of a wing rib is, well, essentially useless in lightweight PLA. So, I'm going to start with a rather bulky take. Two perimeters, two base layers, no infill, and, well, we get a one gram rib out of the original STL file. But can we do better? Having acquired some six millimeter carbon fiber tube, I took the original Clark Y sketch and reworked it for a round spar. Prints with zero top layers, two base layers, two perimeters, and, of course, that useless infill still comes in at about 0.85 of a gram. One third the rate, nice. Still very squishy, though. Back to the drawing board. Would some vertical braces between the oval cutouts help? Certainly some bracing from the spar would be helpful. I tried out a thin internal box shapes, gradually working my way down to 0.1 millimeters thickness. My thought that was that I wanted the outer flange to be uninterrupted, so those cutouts stop short of the outer edges. The result is the ribs feel stronger. There's still an awful lot of stringing. So, Back to YouTube, looking for design of printed wings and discussions about vase mode. Yep, there's a pattern of placing the cutouts at the perimeter. So I went back to the drawing board and shifted the cutouts to the perimeter. My tweaks were well short of a full vase mode, but it did allow me to confirm that the cuts in the perimeter didn't weaken the flanges. And the stringing, well, that reduced quite a bit. Okay, let's go to one perimeter. At 240 degrees C, the flange was hardly wider than normal PLA, and hey, that's a wonderful weight at 0.53 grams, but it's a structural wimp. Timed up the flow rate to the slicer from, say, 40% flow rate to 50%. Ah, now the flange is up to 0.63 millimeters. The weight increased a little bit. It feels better, upping the slicer flow rate to 60%. I end up getting something very close to a 0.8 millimeter flange. And the weight was up a bit, but it felt almost as stiff as the double perimeter. Looks like we found a useful mix to be getting on with. And now for vase mode. Back to YouTube. Ah, 
there was a pattern. Actually, I wasn't far off. Here's a view in FreeCAD of the rip. Subtracting a slice roughly 0.1 millimeter wide was common to allow the extruder to trace into interior voids. I'd already had traces into the voids, so the next is the trace from the spar to the top. No need to change that, but to provide a better brace at the base, I shifted the lower cut stop to just short of touching the spar. Allows the flows to merge, but not cause the slicer to form a join. The next pattern was to place the cuts along the brace in front of the last oval to almost meet at the middle point. Again, the flows would merge, but the slicer would not create a join that would split the object. And lastly, the trailing brace cuts were brought within 0.8 millimeters of the bottom flange. With these changes, the slicer could be switched to vase mode. Hey, what does that look like? Well, let's follow the path in a video, see what that looks like. Yeah, there's a bit of extruder shifting as the base is laid down, but above that, no retractions. At the end of the process, there are a few minor strings to tidy. The braces formed by the cuts seem to have merged with the spars and the flange. There are probably debates about the weight cost of forcing a thicker flange, but it seems to me that the additional stiffness is a useful trait for an RC wing rib.